Hello everyone, thank you for joining us and welcome to another packed out camp now. Barcelona's quest to retain their UEFA Women's Champions League title pits them against two-time winners Wolfsburg who have a formidable record in this fixture and we can't wait for this one tonight. Well, after finishing top of their group, Barcelona brushed aside Real Madrid in the quarterfinals with an 8-3 aggregate victory, which included a 5-2 win in the second leg in a contest that was played in front of the biggest official crowd in women's football history. Well, Wolfsburg, their opponents tonight, secured a spot in the Women's Champions League last fall for the seventh time as they ended Arsenal's run in the competition with a 3-1 aggregate win in front of another fantastic crowd at the Wolfsburg Arena. Well, Wolfsburg and Barcelona are facing each other for a fourth time in the competition. Wolfsburg have won in all three previous meetings, and even more surprisingly, considering their threat in front of goal this season, Wolfsburg are the only team Barcelona have failed to score against in their Champions League history. Well, alongside me, former Leeds United forward Lucy Ward. Lucy, so excited for this game tonight. Uh, surely it's going to be one of the toughest tests for both of these sides, isn't it? It certainly is. I, I, I think that it's going to be a fantastic occasion. I think this year's competition has added the the big games at the big grounds with lots of fans watching, and I think that means it's probably been the best yet. I think you look at this and Barcelona are probably the favourites going into the game just because of how dominant they've been over the last couple of seasons but Wolfsburg should have taken note of how Real Madrid played against Barcelona in the first half of the first leg and I think Wolfsburg have quality players to maybe punish Barcelona on the counter but you just look at the Barcelona players and I cannot see past this Barcelona team. Well the atmosphere is electric in Barcelona of course another packed out stadium which is just so good to see. And I'm sure the players who are waiting inside the tunnel are anticipating a fantastic welcome out onto the pitch. Barcelona have progressed in two of their last three semi-finals. Their only failure in that time was against Wolfsburg. That was just two years ago. It was actually the current Barcelona forward, Fridolina Rolfa, who scored the only goal in the 58th minute, which actually knocked Barcelona out. She's now playing for Barca against her former club tonight. Lucy, where do you see the differences between these two sides? Well, I look at, at, at Wolfsburg. When they last played Barcelona, Barcelona have strengthened significantly since then. I think Wolfsburg always have a strong team. Um, you know, that they, their recruitment is good as well. But I think the way that Wolfsburg play, if they can press Barcelona well, and if they can win the ball back in the right areas, then they could hurt Barcelona. But Barcelona, their best form of defence is keeping the ball and, you know, over two legs, it means that Wolfsburg have to keep them out and it's so difficult to do. However, if Wolfsburg are still in this tie at the end of this game, then it give them a chance over 90 minutes. Well, lots of reason for the Barcelona fans inside this stadium to be excited for. Jonathan Gerald has his side extended their current winning run to 44 matches in all competitions. They beat at Valencia in their last league game on the 16th of April. They have, of course, already claimed their domestic league title, Lucy. Does that give them a little bit of an advantage going into this game, all focus on the Champions League? Um, I, I just think that the way that they are um, and the relentless Barcelona and so they could win their, I think it's 45th game in a row. And I think that the, the, the amount of goals that they score probably gives them the advantage. Being at home in front of this vociferous crowd gives them an advantage. But Wolfsburg has got some wily characters within this team and they will come here full of confidence as well. It's unfamiliar territory on familiar turf for Barcelona tonight, who host a Wolfsburg side they have never beaten before. The Spanish champions return to another packed out camp now with hopes of retaining their European title. It's Wolfsburg who stand in their way tonight.
A huge moment for both sides, who are welcomed to an enormous... Wolfsburg are Barcelona's toughest opponents to date. They've never beaten the visitors. But Jonathan Gelder's names four changes to his side that beat Valencia in their last league outing. It sees Mappy Leon, Captain Alexi Puteas, Patrick Guijaro and Carolyn Graham Hansen all return. Fridolina Rolfo and Carolyn Graham Hansen both start to face their former club. Alexia Puteas is, of course, the club's top scorer this season with 29 goals to her name. Marcetana Bonmati scored three goals in her last four Champions League appearances. It's already a party atmosphere inside the stadium. And there's the Wolfsburg captain, Dominique Janssen. And Alexia Puteas, the captain for Barcelona. Sandra Bastos, Portuguese referee today. Of course, a reminder, there will be video assistant referee too. That's Thiago Martins. So the team for Wolfsburg then. Tommy saw three changes to his side since their victory over Bayern Munich in the Cup. Joel Weidemeyer, Alexandra Pop, and Tabia Wasmut return. Well, Tabia Wasmut is the competition's top scorer. And this is just her debut season. Jill Rhodes celebrates her 25th birthday today. Our Dominique Janssen is the captain for Wolfsburg. Lena Orbedorf, one of the players for Wolfsburg to miss out today after suffering an injury on Sunday. Lucy, who for you are some of the key players? There's one clear key yeah. player right in front of us there. Yeah, there's a lot. I think that the, the strength of Barcelona, you know, they have got excellent players, but the strength is in the team and how they play within that structure. Wolfsburg. Obviously, Vasmut up front is the top scorer so far, and she's had an absolutely excellent season. But there's a lot of experience within that Wolfsburg team that you know that can stand a big occasion like this. Well, it will be Barcelona who will get things going. And we're underway in the first leg of this highly intriguing semi-final. The Spanish champions playing in front of another packed out camp now as they look to record their first ever win over the German giants. Wolfsburg know the challenge ahead, but impressive victories against Europe's elite to get to this point will definitely be welcome motivation. Lucy Ward, former leads forward alongside me and Lucy. This is really an exciting game, isn't it? With two teams who have been in top, top form in the competition. Yeah, and, and, and because history is on the side of Wolfsburg, but since that, their last meeting, you know, we know that Barcelona has strengthened. They've been more effective in terms of the goals they've scored. Here's Puteas, straight away Barcelona looking to make something. And it's Puteas who gets a shot straight into the hands of Almut Schultz. It's far too easy from a Wolfsburg point of view for Barcelona to cut through them. But as far as Barcelona is concerned, if they can get a goal early, then they'll be in complete control of this first leg. Torrejon for Barcelona. It's given away. Here's Jill Hort. 25 today. Jill Hort will be hoping that she can go home with a Nice birthday present. And of course, I guess that's the important part, isn't it? Wolfsburg are hosting the second leg. They'll want to make sure that they stay in this up until then. Yeah, they need to be within touching distance at the end of this 90 minutes of Barcelona because obviously Barcelona, the onus is on them to get themselves in front at home in the first leg. But Wolfsburg, if they can stay in the tie as much as possible, whether it's a win, a draw, or maybe just a loss by the odd goal, then they've done really well taking them back. Over to Germany. Well, Alexia Puteas went down. This one collision with Hoot and Jill Hoard both yeah. coming in. One thing that we will see is an aggressive press when Wolfsburg can get near the ball, which is difficult versus this Barcelona team. 
Here they come, Barcelona, and straight away, within the opening two minutes, they found the opening goal, Aitana Bonmati. And that is a perfect start for the home side in front of another massive crowd. Now they threatened it, hadn't they, in the opening minute? Barcelona, exactly what this crowd wanted, exactly what these players wanted to start off on the front foot. I did think Wolfsburg looked defiant in that when they were standing just before the game, but they haven't started well. I don't know whether there's some nerves there, but that's two opportunities now. It's a good run by Bonmati. It's a longer ball. It just one ball beats both centre backs. And to say such a small player, so strong, Bonmati gets herself in front of Janssen. And there's only one winner there, one on one. Terrific finish. Aitana Bonmati makes it 1 0 for Barca. Four goals in her last five Champions League appearances. She scored in her last game against Valencia as well. And a fantastic finish. Barcelona in control within minutes. Well, it was quite a high line that Wolfsburg had, and there wasn't really that much pressure on Leon on the ball. And, you know, that's not the way that Barcelona usually play. And it's one ball over the top, beats everybody. And Mosso was trying to get away. Barcelona keep the ball in their possession. Here's Torrejon. Now Bonmati. Bonmati spotted a bit of space and it's Rolfer up against her former club. Rolfer can keep on going, looking to get the space to get the shot away. She did it in inches wide. A really fast, frenetic start from Barcelona and Wolfsburg need to do something just to quell what's happening to them. I knew this was a probability. In the end, just wide from Rolfer. That's a terrific run inside. Pop committed herself and nobody really closed her down. As Tommy Stroh, the Wolfsburg manager, was made manager from the start of this season, coming from FC Twente. Probably the last thing he wanted was his side to go down within two minutes against the Barcelona side who are ruthless in front of goal. And Mosso spotting the space. Giharo through to Shinogorcevic. Couldn't quite find the accuracy to find the back of the net. And Wolfsburg are not getting close to Barcelona whatsoever. They're moving the ball quickly. You know, those runs forward. You see there, Giharo had gone forward. Nobody's tracking. Pops having a look round to see who's marking, but. Wolfsburg need to get a gift of this game, otherwise it'll be out of their reach before half-time in the first leg. What do Wolfsburg do to get themselves calm again after that opening goal? Because of they're playing in front of a huge crowd, a historic stadium, and they know how ruthless Barcelona can be. And it probably was the last thing that they would have wanted was to go a goal down within the opening two minutes because now they've got a, a mountain to climb. Yeah, when they get the ball, they've got to keep it because that's what they haven't had, any sort of measured possession. Jans Dotte was trying to get through and draws in the foul too. And see what happens when they do keep it. Jans Dotte has had a, a good campaign so far in the Champions League. She's running, she caused problems and they brought her down, but that's what Wolfsburg haven't had in the opening minutes, any sort of composed or measured possession to just take the sting out of the game. Barcelona do not need any encouragement whatsoever to get the ball forward. So free kick to Wolfsburg. Senja Hooten, Fili Rauch. So it's Hoot to take. A little back flick there from Jons Dotter didn't work out and it's picked up by the Barca captain. Puteas. Here's Jons Dottir again. Out to Jonsson. Pop. You see, what, what this does now is it just takes the nerves out of Wolfsburg. You know, they've been hit straight away from, from kickoff, but 
you've just got to make good decisions and, and this is a really intimidating atmosphere to, for, to play for you can't hardly hear each other so that you've got to be really regimented the, with the way that you're structured and the game plan and just stick to it and trust each other Jonathan Giraldes there, the Barcelona manager, also took over at the start of this season after Louis Cortez's decision to step down. Was his assistant manager, so knows this Barcelona team well. Fantastic season for him. Already winning their domestic league, Barcelona. Of course, they will have their eyes set on trying to keep hold of their Champions League title and come forward again shot comes in and straight into the hands of Schulte with Shunogorcevic who had a go again yeah, Shunogorcevic is probably the furthest forward for Barcelona at this point and quite a focal point she made a run down the channels and she created a couple of opportunities for herself in the opening part of this game Buteas Back to Bonmati, can't he keep hold of that ball? And his Rort will try and chase this one down, but well in by Paredes. Who really, we've not had to mention a, the defenders much for Barcelona, have we? Because they haven't really been called into action. No, they haven't. Lucas Wolfsburg have had a couple of flurries forward, but nothing really that can hurt Barcelona. Complete control in terms of possession. And I just think sometimes Wolfsburg's uh, defensive prowess is not the best, but you know they've got the players on the pitch that can hurt Barcelona. It's just <laughs> it's easier said than done. Well, Wolfsburg do come into this game off the back of two matches against their rivals, Bayern Munich. Beat them in both games in the league. They beat them 6-0, a huge win for them, and then 3-1 in the cup as well. Jena Gorcevic gets away from Jonsson. Now, Graham Hansen can keep on going. Graham Hansen to make it two! A brilliant finish against her former club. Barcelona well in control, and they've got two. There are some fantastic players on this pitch today, but Caroline Graham Hansen has to be in the top three. And that's some going. What a finish that is. And she just keeps her composure. They're having a problem now. Wolfsburg. It hasn't started how they wanted it to start. They've allowed Barcelona to get right into this game. And that's a, that should be that that's a defensive error. Sonogorcevic managed to get it inside for Graham Hansen, but then she keeps a nerve. Ice cool in front of goal, and she's got that finish as well. And to be honest, as much as a possession that Barcelona have had the goals have come from defensive mistakes and that was one defensive mistake and they're just putting themselves under pressure and this tie is just running away from Wolfsburg it's her second goal in the Champions League she scored against Real Madrid she scored again in front of this brilliant crowd Barcelona well in control of this semi-final so far and we've only just played 10 minutes Hendrik. There's Hoot. He's just forcing it there and probably better to just play some passes. There was enough Wolfsburg players around to just get some possession going. I think in, in times of really high pressure and anxiety, you, you don't make good decisions and that's happening to Wolfsburg at the moment. looking to get that ball away from Puteas, but there was Barcelona support around there and it's Napoleon who tidies up. Here's Torrejon. Leon's Dottir only making her third 
appearance in the Champions League. She made her Champions League debut against Arsenal at the Arsenal Stadium. Came on as a substitute and could see her attacking threat as well. Was really quick down the wings. Here's Wolfert. Absolutely suffocate you, Barcelona. Just the two centre backs are back for them, Paredes and Leon, which obviously puts the ball right at risk, but the place to do it. Rolfo again swings it in, looking for the head of Hermoso, but a little bit too much on that, and it gets away from them. Now, Rolfo is playing left back, but it's been nowhere near left back at the start of this game. This is the goal. Once Bonmati had got herself in front of Janssen, got a body between Janssen and the ball. Caroline Graham Hansen, a deft little flick from her right foot onto her left foot, and giving the fans exactly what they wanted. John's it. Now Wolfsburg looking to come forward. Basmut is ahead of it. Decides to go for Jill Hort. Bit of space opening up. Here's Hoot! What a block there from Paredes. And she celebrates as if she scored a goal. That was a huge moment for the visitors. Barcelona keeping them at bay. Now that's a bit of confidence now for Wolfsburg. We talked about before the game that they have got the players that can hurt this Barcelona defence, particularly when they push players forward. But what a terrific block that is. Look at Paredes, it's like she's scored a goal. Absolutely brilliant. Well, that has given Barcelona something to think about. A real first attack from Wolfsburg. I'll put the corner in. The head is there, Jonas dots it. Got a touch to it and it will be a goal kick. You see those sort of set pieces, there's a chance. Paredes, she's going back towards her own goal, gives Hoot another chance and then the goalkeeper stood tall. Well, Svenja Hoot almost getting her side back in this. And that really will have given the visitors a glimmer of hope. that's all you need especially when you have the competition's top goal scorer hanging around up front Tabio Basmut not really managed to get herself in control of the ball really as Barcelona come forward here's Rolfo again cross comes in Graham Hansen's there she was pushed wide really by Rauch now Rolf is getting a lot of space down that left-hand side. They're defending quite narrow, Wolfsburg. You know, they're happy to, to let Barcelona have it wide, but you've still got to close down and stop that cross. And that's nearly another one on target for Barcelona. Here's Janssen. Pop up against Patrick Iharo. Trying to go through. It's a great winning back of possession from Barcelona. Wolfsburg are going to do that. They've got to play better past the press, and maybe the second or third pass has to be a little bit longer. Bomati with the ball through, looking for Zinagorcevic. So the problem Wolfsburg have got is because of how fluid the rotation is. And the ability of the centre midfielders to go up and beyond Barcelona, it's who marks, you have to have the communication and you have to follow your player. Graham Hansen was picked up by Janssen. Rasmus came flying in as well, looking to get hold of that. 
will be a Barca threat. Also, we've not really seen much of her at all in this game. Wolfsburg have not given her any sort of possession in the danger, danger areas. It was one of the little subplots, really, to this game, wasn't it? With Alexia Puteas and Tabio Asmut. Asmut, currently the competition's top goal scorer, just one behind her is Alexia Puteas. And it's not, not normal, is it, really, to think that Puteas has got someone ahead of her in terms of goal scoring form? Not the amount of goals that Barcelona score as a team. Well, the goals per 90 is over two, I think, across this Champions League. And usually we see them beating teams three and four nil plus. has really had to come into her own in that forward position. Eva Pyle, who is a real miss for Wolfsburg. One of the big threats on goal for them. Had a big injury, long injury. She's back on the bench for Wolfsburg today. And here come the home side. Rolfa with the ball in. Shinogorjevic almost got there. Hermoso. Fingertip save from Schultz. And then in the end, cleared away by Rauch. I think that, that was from a, her own player. That save from Schultz there, I think the ball came, she's not particularly feeling steady on her feet. I think she might have got a whack across her face, but it was a terrific save. I don't know whether her save was with her face, but it looked to be from her own player. She is involved in this game far more than she would have wanted to be. And again, Barcelona move it so quickly, and that's a problem. That run from Rolfer is a problem for Wolfsburg. They need to get back and defend against her. See her own yeah. player right in the side of her face. But Rolf has, has left back. It's a little bit skewed the way that Barcelona are playing. Rolf is getting the space down the left-hand side. Serna Gorcevic is going inside and then Amoso, as she usually does, goes exactly where she wants to go to pick up the ball. Well, it does give Wolfsburg team an opportunity to go down to the dugouts and have a word with their manager Tommy Slaught who has just got to calm things down doesn't he for his side yeah they've got to decide what what they're going to do are they are they going to press Barcelona or are they going to sit deep you know and deny space but at some point they have to engage and those the 1v1 individual duels that that Wolfsburg pride themselves on and I know the missing Oberdorf which who is a massive miss in centre midfield because her physicality but they have to get closer to Barcelona, and if they're not going to do that, then they have to close the passing lines into the front, but it's so difficult. And they're getting the energy from the crowd. Listen to the crowd. Barcelona players watching on you can see right at the back there Lika Martins also not involved still injured missed that game against Real Madrid as well I'm sure she'll be gutted that she's not been able to play in front of the crowds inside this stadium Jan Stott here looking to get on with it quickly it's fallen to Hort Hendrik. Wiedemeyer to lay it onto Hoop, but it was picked up by Rolfer. Puteas. It's a decision for the centre backs for Wolfsburg whether they follow him or so in. And if they do, then one of the two centre midfielders for Wolfsburg have to track the runners. Well, here she is arriving again, Rolfer. On that far side, looking to cross it in. Shunogorcevic almost got a touch to it. It's kept alive by Graham Hansen. Torrejon. Paredes with a nice bit of skill to get away from Weissmuth, and the crowd clearly enjoyed that. see who who's playing on that right side for Wolfsburg is clearly not as happy to defend 
and she is going forward, but they're not getting the ball to her in those attacking situations, so she has to come back and, and follow Rolfer. And also with the ball over to Rolfer. Now to Puteas, didn't quite get a good touch to it. And Giharo decided to pick up on it and take a shot of her own. We'll come back into it a little bit. Paredes has had a couple of good touches. The most important one being the block on the goal line, which would have allowed Wolfsburg back into this game. Schulter's OK after getting smacked in the face by the ball. And let's not forget, Wolfsburg are in absolutely imperious form in their league. You know, they struggled in the group stages in the Champions League, then did well against Arsenal, but I think the win versus Chelsea just kick-started their season. They had injuries, but... This shows that the, the levels that this Barcelona team are at. This is the no mugs Wolfsburg. Rauch with the ball, looking for Weismut. Here's Gerrard. They're not allowed to continue because there was a little foul in the build-up to that. I think Wolfsburg can take encouragement from sometimes they're getting in good positions where just a better final ball or a better pass through it's keeping it shut at the back at the same time, which they haven't managed to do. Graham Hansen, here's Bombati. Puteas. Looking for that ball to Rolfe, who's been a real thorn in the side for Wolfsburg, hasn't she, in the opening 24 minutes or so. Puteas this time decides to go from distance. Kept Schultz on her toes. Just look at the, the two centre midfielders for Wolfsburg. They're really having a problem. They're not really cutting the passing lines into the front. They're not really following the runners. And I, I think they're just completely, as Barcelona's way, is making it 3v2 at all stages and overloading in those central areas. And usually we see Wolfsburg better in those central areas. Rauch. Janssen decides to go back to a keeper. As you were mentioning, Lucy Wolfsburg in very good form. Currently four points clear of Bayern Munich. At the top of the Frauen Bundesliga. Just three games remain as well. A little bit more pressure then on Wolfsburg coming into this game than Barcelona, who've already wrapped up their league a couple of weeks ago, actually. This is where they need to be better. That was clearly offside, but, you know, when they're getting in those situations, they have to make the most of it because the game is, keeps going into lulls after that initial really high-intensity start to the game where Barcelona got the two goals. It's it's lulled a little bit, and that's when Wolfsburg have to make the most of those because Barcelona are in complete control of the tempo of this game. Guijaro. Well intercepted, and now ball finding the feet of Svenja Hoot. Looking to cross it in, and she's asking if there was a handball there perhaps from... Maria Leon. I tried for the early cross, didn't she? Leon's hand was out. You can see when the assistant referee obviously had a word with the, the referee there. And it's an opportunity now for Wolfsburg, and when you do have moments in front of goal, they have got the, the players, we keep saying this, but at the moment, They've been absolutely suffocated by Barcelona and the way they're playing. Now listen to the noise. 
Rauch to take the free kick for Wolfsburg. In it goes. A little bit overcooked. He won't be happy with the quality of the ball into the box then because he talked before the game about your game plan and knowing it's going to be difficult when Barcelona will flourish in front of this crowd and the noise and the energy levels and how Barcelona want to play. So picking out the moments where you make the most of where you are and a set piece from wide is a massive moment for Wolfsburg. Latvine just start holding on to Puteas. Rauch anticipated that ball. And it's given straight back to Rolfe. Giharo. Here's Bonmati. Giharo again. Saw some space opening up. Took her opportunity. Almost Schultz saw it as well. See there, Lucy, from the attempt six for Barcelona, just the one for Wolfsburg on target. Yeah, he'd be really, really happy with his team start and how they've responded in this game. Getting themselves two goals in front, I think Wolfsburg have particularly helped themselves, particularly the back four. They've not defended well against Barcelona whatsoever. Also, Graham Hansen couldn't get away from Hendrik and he goes in Wolfsburg's favour. The best thing about Barcelona, Barcelona great watching. One of the best things, it, they look really fluid, like that the, they can go anywhere, but it's it, it's. Their play is within a really strict structure that actually looks fluid. That's how good it is. Puteas with the ball in. Again, Shunagorcevic involved in a lot of the chances that are opening up for Barcelona. But it just seems like Wolfsburg have got their structure back a little bit more. Yeah, I think I honestly do think that it's just Barcelona just controlling the tempo of the game. I think Schultz done well, a great starting position, but Gorcevic has done really, really well with the runs that she's making into those channels. Mimoso's dropping, she's a little bit central, just leaving room for Rolfer on that left hand side. So the first corner for Barcelona, happily on to take it, swinged in by Paredes. Jan Stolte doing well to keep hold of this ball. She keeps charging forward, goes to ground, and she's absolutely furious. She's not been given anything there. Yeah, she tried to stand on her feet, Jan Stolte, and she's a problem. If, she can, if they can get her on the ball, she's strong and quick. And she played really, really well in the previous round. And to the better players in this Wolfsburg team in terms of an attacking sense, and they've not really been on the ball and not been fed, but that was a chance there. And it looked like she was fouled. Body in front of Paredes, she was too quick for Paredes. I think the referee's not going to be fooled by that. You, if you're going to go down, it has to be at the moment that you're, that you're pulled, and it was pretty obvious that it wasn't then. Bonmati. Here's Puteas. Important block in there by Hendrik. Torrejon. Bon Matin. Kihara with a lovely ball in. 
to Torrejon again. Out to Hermoso to make it three. They're having fun now, Barcelona. Jenny Hermoso with the third goal for Barca inside half an hour played. And they are in full control of this semi-final. Wolfsburg just cannot cope with the passing and movement. Look at Torahon, nobody's tracking her. It's easy for her to get forward. Also, that is another cool thing. That's the thing, they get in front of goal and they just don't panic. Take a touch, and Mosso knows exactly where she's going to put it. And Schultz done all right for Wolfsburg, but she's let three goals in. And that's all about, they just cannot cope with the relentless bodies and the movement of these Barcelona players, and they're really, really on top form. Goal number five in the Champions League then for Denny Hermoso. Goal number 21 in all competitions. She was the Ballon d'Or runner-up to her teammate Alexia Puteas this year. And Hermoso will be glad to get herself on that score sheet in front of this mega crowd. Here's Puteas, the Barca captain. You know, all I would say from a Wolfsburg point of view that they've just they've not laid a finger on Barcelona in terms of the individual duels. You've got to go in hard. You have to win those duels in, in wherever you are on the pitch, and they're just not doing that. And that's not anything about football skill. That's about the energy and the intensity to get close to these Barcelona players, and it's not happened. And they, they just look like they're losing hope right from the start, really, after conceding that first goal, Wolfsburg. Just over half an hour played. Barcelona 3 0 up. Three different goal scorers as well. We talked about the last time that Wolfsburg faced Barcelona. They were nowhere near as good as this. And it is quite a, a shock to the system of players when you're up again, particularly in, you know, it's a cup competition, it's a semi final, you're at camp now there's 90 odd thousand people and you know you end up getting absolutely shocked by the way that Barcelona are, are playing and you know Wolfsburg have just completely let this tie go by not being equal to anything in terms of the physical intensity and equal to what Barcelona had on offer in the opening minutes top here they go again Shunogorcevic looking to get in and it was a good block in the end it was Wiedemeyer I think it was who got the block in and again one ball is beating a defense and you know that should not be happening you know, that's not about Barcelona being absolutely fantastic. That's just a, a ball and then a 1v1 duel. But Wolfsburg are coming out consistently on second best basis. Here's Graham Hansen. The play goes on. Pop. 
looking to get involved and this time the referee does stop playing gives the free kick to Barcelona but that's better that's aggression that's what they need Wolves play. I know she gave the foul away then Pop, but that's because of frustration but that sort of physicality and in the 1v1 duels is exactly what they need someone that has plenty of experience in the Champions League is Alex Pop she's won this competition three times Ah, lovely ball in now. Here's the captain, Alexia Puteas, to make it four. Four nil Barcelona. And of course, Alexia Puteas had to get involved too. Cruise control now. And it goes from bad to worse for Wolfsburg. We know the forwards have scored the goal so far for Barcelona, but the thing that's hurting Wolfsburg the most is the runs from central midfield that they've really not picked up. They haven't picked one up, one run up from whether it's full back or whether it's centre midfielder. But look how open they are there. They're trying to play offside there. Hendrik, absolutely no chance. And Pateas will quite happily hold a run. In terms of defending, you cannot defend against anybody in the Champions League like that, Wolfsburg, never mind Barcelona. Goal number 30 then for Alexia Puteas. Goal number nine in the Champions League. She's now joint top scorer in the competition alongside Wolfsburg's Tavia Vasmut. Here's Svenja Hoot. And the flag was up. I'm sure there's quite a lot, or there was quite a lot of nerves for Wolfsburg coming into this game, knowing about the atmosphere and how good this Barcelona team are. But I suppose until you play them, you don't realise how good they are. And they certainly know now. Is there a sense of shock, perhaps, in this yeah, Wolfsburg side? I, I, I think so. I mean, that you know, they're making Wolfsburg look ordinary. I mean, they're not helping themselves either, but I do think that, you know, Barcelona pass and move very, very quickly. They've probably not been at their best even. I think Wolfsburg have not defended that well, but well, that initial shock, I think, and the atmosphere, the occasion, Wolfsburg have, have just not risen to it at all. Hermoso. One player that has been very busy is Almut Schult, who has been called into action multiple times in this first half. Barcelona peppering in the chances. Rasmud loses out. There's Puteas. When I talked about it being fluid and but in a really structured system. That little ball there that Pateas played to Torrejon and she wasn't where she was supposed to be. And, and that was Torrejon's fault rather than Pateas, if, if you get what I mean. I know it's yeah. very difficult to think that, but the way that they play and how structured they are in that position, that's where Torrejon should have been as a fullback. So Nagorcevic keeps the ball up. Leon. And also through to Graham Hansen. His help arriving now in the box is headed away by Janssen, only out to Bonmati. Into the hands of Schultz, who will try and get that as far away from her as possible. weird that Homoso's movement and dropping and allowing another player to go further on in that movement actually causes the most problems and just ends up with Homoso deep but allows other players to get forward and Wolfsburg can't really deal with that well the screams that you can hear is because the Barcelona captain Puteas went down to ground Challenge from Hendrik. Just looking at the 
goals again. Quite a lot of people in here will have lost count. It's a terrific play, but like I say, there's quite a few times where I would say that Wolfsburg contributed to their own downfall in terms of the way, but you just see the run there from Torahon. Nobody's tracking Torahon from right back. She goes in that inside channel and it's just too easy. Namoso gets her goal, but she's done a lot of her work off the ball in terms of a movement when Barcelona have got it. Just creates everything for Barcelona. Namoso is such a clever player. I have to say, though, they're missing Oberdorf in, in midfield, I think, Wolfsburg. I think she would have made a difference in terms of what happens there. Rasmus tried to pick it up, but she couldn't get there in time. Well, this is the usual story, isn't it, with Barcelona always doubling the amount that the opponent has done in terms of passes completed. Torrejon. How do Wolfsburg come out in the second half and get themselves back in this game, if they can? Very difficult, with <laughs> difficulty, I have to say. Here's Puteas, looking for that cross in. It took a touch from Biedermeyer on the way in. There is a clear difference, isn't there, in this Barcelona side that faced Wolfsburg two years ago when Wolfsburg were able to knock them out of the competition. Of course, the reinforcements that Barcelona have made, new signings, winning the Champions League last season. They just are an unstoppable force. Yeah, I think the signings they, make, they made in the final third turned them into, you know, an excellent possession-based team into something incredible. The three midfielders, you know, the way that they play and they distinctly know where each other are. And then they have different types of forwards and it just means that that sort of variety makes it so hard for the opposition to defend against it. Ball into Shunogorcevic, looking to play it back to Rolfer, but the bright green shirt to Wolfsburg were in the way to stop that. Jons Dotter. Just the one minute, had it on in the first half. Line couldn't keep hold of that. Puteas with an important touch in. Play goes on. Hermoso and just waiting for help to arrive. Graham Hansen's in the area, but quickly closed down. Puteas. There goes the half-time whistle and what a first half it's been for Barcelona in complete control of this semi-final. The captain Alexi Puteas making it four. Well, it all started with Aitana Bonmati's goal within two minutes of this game starting. A fabulous finish from her. 2-0 came from Carolina Graham Hansen against her former side only 10 minutes into the game. Then Jenny Hermoso to make it three with Puteas hurting Wolfsburg even more to make the half-time score. Barcelona four, Wolfsburg nil. And Lucy, the big question is, Wolfsburg, how on earth do they get themselves back in this tie in the second half? Well, in terms of you know, on a practical level, they have to shut up shop. They have to not concede again. And that is the easiest thing in the world to say. But getting them in the dressing room now, having conversations, thinking about how they're going to defend, 
and just limit the damage because they've got 90 minutes back at home. You know, that 4 0 will probably be too far too far at this stage anyway. But, you know, for a little bit of pride coming to camp now and making sure that what happened in the first half doesn't happen in the second half. Well, they're a team that score a lot of goals in the league. They've scored 146 goals already. Of course, they've been on the score sheet plenty of times in this competition too, but they are already hurting Wolfsburg with their threats on target. Relatively even ball possession, really, though, isn't it? Yeah, but Wolfsburg just haven't used, you know, tactically in, in, going forward. They, they've not been on the same level of Barcelona and not kept it as well. So half-time score, Barcelona 4, Wolfsburg 0. It's impossible to take hold of the world spotlight overnight. Create your own uniform. Be a cover model, a powerful athlete, or compete as a trans woman. Impossible? No. I am possible. Tu me demandais un contrat là, c'est fini là. C'est vrai Ah, c'est mort, c'est mort, c'est mort. Je vais faire foot ou je vais. Genre. Moi, ça, le joueur il passe pas, soit le ballon il passe, soit. Voilà, soit le ballon, soit le joueur. Mais moi j'aime bien les défenseurs. Ah ouais Ouais, parce qu'ils sont durs, j'aime bien. C'est marrant, hein ouais, Je vais te mettre derrière maintenant <rire> On voit que le foot féminin a beaucoup progressé, il y a beaucoup de niveaux. Même des fois, j'essaie de comparer un peu. Je me dis, mais si on joue contre elle, est-ce qu'on va gagner On va parler de ton arrivée à l'OL. Quelles sont tes impressions Pour moi, c'était un rêve devenu entre guillemets réalité parce que je viens de la Martinique et j'avais un objectif en tête, c'était de, ouais, de venir ici en métropole et euh, j'ai eu cette opportunité avec l'OL. Donc euh, le destin, il était ici et quand je suis arrivé, il y avait le soleil un peu. Avec quel âge j'avais 16 ans. 16 ans J'avais 16 ans quand ah, je... Ça remonte. Hein. Ouais, ça remonte. <rire> J'ai fait du chemin. Hein. Ah ouais. <rire> je sais, je sais. <rire> Depuis ton arrivée, comment tu trouves l'évolution du club En 2006, quand je suis arrivé, la section féminine n'était pas comme elle l'est aujourd'hui. L'OL a connu euh, les années 2000 euh, des belles années. Après, le président Jean-Michel Ola s'est toujours eu en tête d'avoir un club performant sur le plan européen. Et euh, au fur et à mesure des années, il a décidé d'investir un peu plus sur, euh, sur les filles. Ça a marché Ça a marché. Il a toujours euh, cru euh, en nous. C'est quelqu'un qui a toujours des, des objectifs et des rêves. Et ça, ça passe par nous, euh, filles et garçons, parce qu'il euh, bah, rêve à travers nous. Ouais, il a beaucoup investi, même dans son entraînement, ici avec, euh, avec nous. Et... Je trouve que c'est une bonne chose. C'est cool de se croiser parce qu'on défend le même maillot et, et on essaye de se soutenir même si on a des rythmes un peu différents ouais, qui ne voulaient pas dissocier les deux. Que pour lui, c'était important. Après, nous, on a toujours su et on le sait encore aujourd'hui que forcément, la vitrine, c'est vous. La vitrine, c'est nous, les trophées, c'est vous. <rire> non, après, non. <rire> Across the goal, second opportunity is into the net. Reynard took everyone by surprise. And that's surely already game set and match. La Ligue des Champions, de l'avoir euh, soulevé la première fois, c'est indescriptible en fait. Où la première, c'était à Londres. À, à Londres, à Fulham. Ouais. Au Corvin Cottage. Ouais, c'était ah, à Fulham. Ouais. T'étais dans le petit vestiaire où tu dois baisser la tête. Pour Exactement, rentrer. tu dois baisser la tête. <rire> en plus, moi, j'étais dans le couloir, j'ai baissé la tête. <rire> c'est vrai en plus. Ah. Mais ouais, c'était là-bas, c'était des beaux souvenirs. Ouais. Après, j'ai eu l'opportunité de la soulever plusieurs fois, mais. 6 après. L'Olympique Lyonnais, les fenêtres champions d'Europe, une quatrième fois de suite. Mesdames, vous êtes incontestablement les meilleurs. Quelle victoire ici à Budapest. Forcément, ça doit nous inspirer, ça doit nous, nous motiver surtout. Parce que si vous l'avez fait, c'est que c'est faisable. Et, et on doit s'inspirer de ça tous les jours, sur un très bon match ou de surpasser. Et, et c'est comme ça que, que le club va grandir, que ce soit masculin ou féminin. En plus, on voit que le foot féminin il prend de, de l'ampleur, tu vois. Et euh, non, moi, c'est une bonne chose.
Est-ce que tu penses que la section féminine de l'OL a été euh, une inspiration pour les grands clubs qui n'avaient pas avant une section féminine aussi forte Ce qu'on voit aujourd'hui, il y a de plus en plus de noms. Il y a quelques années, il n'y avait pas la Juve, même si elles étaient là, mais il y avait très peu de moyens. Cascarino a got the pace to get to this. And Macario with the turn, brilliantly done. Fantastic goal. That is quality. Wonderful spin in the box there. And it's hard to see a way back now. The Juventus. Petit à petit, les, les équipes se structurent et au niveau européen, ça monte, ça monte bien. Donc tant mieux pour le football féminin et, et tant mieux pour nous. Wendy Renard, euh, j'aime beaucoup l'image qu'elle donne en fait. J'aime beaucoup son parcours, la motivation en fait, qu'elle donne euh, aux jeunes joueuses. Elle donne l'envie de se surpasser et de devenir comme elle en fait, tout simplement. Ce qui m'a motivé en fait euh, à vouloir devenir footballeuse professionnelle, c'est que ben, en fait, il y a mon frère qui est footballeur professionnel. Lorsque j'allais euh, voir euh, les matchs euh, de mon frère à l'Olympique Lyonnais, je voyais les joueuses en fait jouer, s'entraîner. Et ça, ça me motivait en fait et j'avais juste envie en fait de devenir comme elle et de me surpasser. Laura, c'est qui ta meilleure joueuse à l'Olympique Lyonnais Amandine Henry, j'aime beaucoup. En plus, elle joue à mon poste. Donc euh... <rire> franchement, Amandine Henry, elle fait le taf. Hein. Ah c'est bah la différence sur le terrain. C'est qui ta meilleure joueuse euh, Cascarino, franchement, elle est très technique, j'aime bien. Ah ouais, comme toi, hein Ouais, ouais c'est Wendy Renard. Voilà, elle arrête tout. Enfin, vraiment, c'est la patronne. Que... Ouais, sa taille et tout, c'est la patronne de la défense. On vient de Lyon et euh, on a envie également d'intégrer euh, bah, un jour euh, cette équipe et euh, de gagner plusieurs titres. Je pense que oui, le football féminin évolue énormément et n'a pas fini encore d'évoluer. All right, this is Lissi Yuhan. Oran. <laughs> so here we have Janice Kamen. She's my friend. <laughs> Kadisha Buchanan, also known as Kisha Bala. You can tell by the nice ball. I say Amandine Henri. Ooh, Mandy. I call her Mandy. This is us. <laughs> Do you know? When I was young. Because it's not the same. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. But we see Jim for it. <laughs> I had no idea where you're born. I need an easier question. I have no idea how to. I don't know, but I know the spell. Okay. Three. Three. <laughs> what is that? Like a laughing? Yeah, with the little hand thingies. Mm. Always looks so happy. Like this. <laughs> you want the new one? I have a lot new plan, but the new one is this one. Three. Yes! yes! <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, it's a long story. No, <laughs> <laughs> she has a, a little um, problem uh, at her knee, and sometimes he, this will be patate in France. <laughs> <laughs> so she called me a patate. Voilà. Uh, Warren Brown. I'm ready. One, two, three. Is this even the name of the song, Brown Mary? Big wheels keep on turning. Like Tina so, Turner? Yeah. Big wheels keep on turning. Brown Mary keep on burning. Rolling. This is, this is your era. Rolling. Yeah, that's it. It's getting hot now. It's getting hot. It's a book You know me? <laughs> Yes, I know you don't shoot. <laughs> One, two. Ah, <laughs> I'm Erika Wittin. I'm a model. And a dancer. From my living room to magazine covers. I make my own rhythm. The industry has to keep up. I was born this way. This. My story is not impossible. Because I am possible.
Well, welcome back. Barcelona in complete control in the first half as they got four goals past Wolfsburg. And really, the question that we've been asking ourselves during that halftime break, Lucy, is where has it all gone wrong for Wolfsburg? Well, I think one the key thing is that they're not used to playing against this Barcelona team. You know, some, some uh, teams in the Spanish league will know how to play against them, whether they beat them or not, they don't beat them, but they know how to restrict their chances. But I think in terms of Wolfsburg, that, that this has probably been one of the worst performances I've seen against Barcelona from a Champions League team in such a big game as well. But, you know, they've really struggled to deal with the movement from Barcelona. Um, I think when they've had to do things defensively, the simple things, they haven't done them well. They've left central areas wide open at the back in their defensive third, which is, you know, is, is a ridiculous thing to do against any team in the Champions League, never mind Barcelona. Um, and it's a long way back. But, uh, you know, in terms of approaching the second half, they have to just really restrict the space. They maybe have to drop deeper to deny space in behind they have to be more compact in central areas and then come and then counter when they do have the opportunities because Barcelona leaves spaces they, they throw that many bodies forward that they leave a lot of space at the back but you've got to have the ball to, to exploit that space and at the moment Wolfsburg are not having the ball in the right areas and they're not defending very very well against this Barcelona team when you look at the players that Wolfsburg have on the bench, of course, Eva Pior is one of the players that's recently come back for Wolfsburg after being out for a long time with injury. They've also got Bolin Brimmer as well, who is, of course, a very experienced player. Is there a need for a change in, in tactics and perhaps more energy coming from the bench? Uh, per perhaps, but I just don't think that, that their quality forward players, Wolfsburg, they haven't got into the game. You know, they haven't counted well, they, they, they haven't been compact. Um, and to be honest, they haven't played their usual way and, and they've just been mesmerised, I think, in defence by, by Barcelona's movement. Uh, they've not followed runners, you know, they've not passed on players. They've, you know, I, the, the last goal through the middle is completely open. They dragged the centre back out, Barcelona, and it just opened up the gap. So it's about being structured and organised and hopefully, in terms of the spectacle of the game, that the manager's gotten sorted in terms of their organisation in the second half. I mean, he saw how Real Madrid played against them in that, you know, they pressed them, they, then they kept the ball, then they chose the moments to attack, and Wolfsburg has been absolutely nowhere near. But you look at the quality of this side, and they haven't played as well against Barcelona as some, some teams that have not got the quality that Wolfsburg have got. Here come Barcelona then. Ready for another 45 minutes in the Women's Champions League. They're already got themselves with a comfortable scoreline in the first half. 4-0, it finished in the first half. Fridolina Rolfo was one of the players who was playing such an important part for Barcelona. But if Barcelona have a weakness, it is in full-back position in terms of engaging and, and, and facing them up 1v1, but if you don't have the ball, you, you've got absolutely no chance of doing that, neither. And look at Rolfa, her average position is further up the pitch, the way she's playing. And the question will be, can Wolfsburg find their way back in this semi-final tie? We're back underway in the second half. Barcelona leading by four goals to nil. It was a completely dominant performance in the first half from the Spanish side. The German Giants, who are so experienced in this competition, were completely silenced. That line. Here's Rort. Jans Dotte is asking for it. And that pass from Jill Rort wasn't quite accurate enough to find it, but they've got it back in their possession, Wolfsburg. Jans Dotte now looking to get away from Torrejon. No changes in this second half so far. Jan Stotte. Starting brightly here for Wolfsburg. 
And the shot comes in and straight into the hands of Sandra Panos. Well, the setup is already better in terms of when they've got it, Wolfsburg, that they're set in a position, the players, where when, if they do lose it, that they can win it back straight away. They never had that in the first half, but that's obviously something the manager has given them at, at half time. Bomati. Over the top here's Graham Hansen. Crosses it into Hermoso. Pop got a little touch to it, which allowed Dominic Jonsson to clear that ball away. Jenny Hermoso, goal scorer of Barcelona's third. And there's Caroline Graham Hansen, who scored Barca's second in lovely fashion. Little flick in here from Hermoso, looking for Puteas, who's trying to play it back. Graham Hansen keeps it alive. Rolfer on the edge of the box. Just looking to put one in that bottom corner. I expect to see more from Hoot in an attacking sense, but I think she just got a knock there on the knee. Getting back and defending. Again, Barcelona just find it easy to get in those positions. and She just got caught, didn't she, by Pateas, is trying to do the back heel. Hoot down, getting some medical attention, but wonder what the message would have been from him. Tommy Sword, the Wolfsburg manager at half time, because that is quite the half time talk you've got to have, isn't it, when you are down by such a big goal margin? Yeah, better in possession, but but in good positions so that when you do lose it, and that, that sort of starting 45 seconds where they, they had the ball and lost it a couple of times and then won it back is what Real Madrid did to Barcelona but I'm not particularly think that he will be worried about his side because you know that when they are on top in games Barcelona they score goals and that's exactly what they've done you see that flick just right into the inside of Hoot's knee that's a sore one I would suspect she'll be okay in terms of walking it off but that's a stud into the kneecap is really painful the play continues here's Wiedemeyer Rolfe. Rasmus came charging in. Gihar. Was looking for a neat ball into Puteas. I do think Wolfsburg lacked the pressure and the int intensity. I don't care how good a player you are, if you're put under pressure, by an opponent on the ball, it, you know, you're more likely to lose it. Yes, these Barcelona players are good, but you know, we've seen that they can be put under pressure, but Wolfsburg, they didn't really lay a finger on them in the first half. I'm looking to improve that in this second half. I'm not sure, just showing her calmness and control under pressure. Bomati. Here's Graham Hansen. Graham Hansen again looking to find that opportunity in the box. Ball wasn't kept in. Actually, it looked like it came off the. It was kicked against the Barcelona player. I don't know why Schultz went for that. It did look initially. was kicked against Graham Hansen. And so she could have just left that. So corner then to Barcelona. Graham Hansen to take. Paredes was there with a the header and flicked on in the end by Sunogorcevic. It's five for Barcelona. It looks like the assistant referee put a flag up. Oh, they're just oh. checking it, aren't they? That's a great little dink ball in. Good header. And the assistant put a flag up. Whether 
that was. It was a tight one, wasn't it? Sena Gorcevic is in a really good position. As the ball moves, I don't think when it was kicked, it's been checked. Well, they've checked it, and the goal does not stand. And the scoreline stays. Barcelona 4, Wolfsburg 0. It was a tight call. And on the other end, here's Jons Dutter. Couldn't find the pass on to Jill Hort, who was waiting for it. Guterres has given it back. Jill Hort with a shot. Directly to the Barca keeper, Panos. They've already been better offensively in the opening part of the second half than they were the whole of the, the first half. You can just see it's a heel, isn't it? Just about. Sona Gorcevic just about offside. got Jonas Tatia in a couple of times now down that left-hand side and she has got the pace and the trickery to beat a defender. Wolfe. I'm sure she was going for a shot or a cross there, Lucy. Great is able to that pass back to a keeper. Hermoso. Nice pass to find Graham Hansen. Can't get away from Pop. Torejon. Pudeas. Oh, that's lovely play here from Barcelona. And Donejon with the shot, and it was actually saved by Schultz. Shoulder, it seems. Well, that would have been the best one yet, just because of the movement. The step over the ball, allowing Torrejon in down that right-hand side. And watch this. One and two touch, and that. So clever. Torrejon. Schultz, to be fair, she's let four goals in, but at times she's kept the score down. Corner comes in, Paredes is there again. Historically really creative on corners, Barcelona, and they've found Paredes a couple of times now, and Wolfsburg not picked up on it. Here's Lord. Ball was intercepted by Giharo, and then Alex Pop came in with the challenge, and the free kick goes the way of Barcelona. You see, Rudd gave the ball away far too cheaply. Then a little bit high there from Pop. She's a type of player that this situation will really, really frustrate. Not like a challenge that typifies that frustration. And Paredes twice already has been the player to get involved in those corner kicks for Barcelona. Now it's really on who's fouled there by Jill Hort. She's had a good game, Leon, but we're talking about in more an offensive role and the building up of play comes from her in that position. She will always be there to defend if she has to.
Holford. Pop getting in the way. Veerdemeyer. Nice ball over the top, looking for Svenja Hutu. She's going to try and just dink it away from the goalkeeper and the accuracy wasn't there to find the back of the net. And that all came about with it, how aggressive Pop was in terms of the closing down. It's a good play. He went over the top. It probably might have been just offside, but can give them some hope, Wolfsburg, that they can get in behind Barcelona. And it's about exploiting the spaces that they leave. And left by Zinovacevic, she immediately looked over to the assistant referee. The flag was up. Mapillion back in to get the possession back for Barcelona. Gihara, here's Bonmati. Guteas. As I said, Oshuala. It's been away from the Barcelona team with injury for a few weeks. Sustained it in February. This is nice play again from Barcelona. Bolfa looking to cut it back to Puteas. They keep hold of it too. Guijaro. Here's Puteas who seems to have time on the ball. Now Bonmati. Bonmati again. And her shot goes wide. Again, terrific one and two touch play. Barcelona really enjoying themselves in the final third, but Wolfsburg are getting bodies in the way. know exactly where each other are going to be. Also desperately just trying to get a foot in or body in the way in the end. Bomati gets it. He cannot challenge in terms of careful not give a penalty away. You have to say the atmosphere inside this stadium has been mega, hasn't it? They haven't stopped singing and supporting the Barcelona players all game. You asked a question about 94,000 they were expecting today have come in, and that's just the quality of what they've seen. They've definitely got the money's worth in the opening half hour. Here yeah, the Pior is ready for Wolfsburg. And they look to make their first change of the evening. Kihau spotted some space for Rolfe. Nice ball, too. There's Puteas. And on any other day, that would have probably found the back of the net. Yes, yeah, getting further and further forward now. Puteas tries to take it first time, pass it, passing it into the net, but just didn't quite get the accuracy. Puteas, ball in for Sunogorcevic. Big save again from Schultz. And then Janssen's there to prevent the corner. And again, it's just a, a clever run. Sunogorcevic in behind. Nobody's picking her up, nobody's following her. Not trying to play her offside and again relying on Schultz to save them. Well, it's Alex Pop who will make way for Eva Pio. Eva Pio, who's been missing from Wolfsburg for quite some time after getting injured, back in action again. She returned in that game against Arsenal and. Such a goal threat as well when her side are in top form. Jon Stotter. Hoot heads it towards Ladvine, who's looking to release the ball into space for 
Vasma to try and chase on his. Payo is looking to reach for it, but can't get there. That's Wolfsburg's best bit of play so far in the game. Give and go, passing it well, keeping possession, good run. You see that movement in behind. Again, Schultz equal to it. This is Barcelona's fifth Champions League semi-final. It's their fourth in succession. As Alex Pop reaches a dugout. Disappointing evening in the end for her. Uh, I think probably the only reason he's taken her off is just wary. She might get sent off the way that she's been. In terms of her aggression, and is much better in the second half, and that's what they need. But he doesn't want to lose a player or have her not fit for the second leg. Also, Graham Hansen with Pomati overlapping. That time clears it away, but not very far. And Jan Stotte got there to play it out. there as well for Barcelona one of the players on the bench and she's been in really good form scored a hat-trick actually in their last home game there's Villarreal and there's Claudia Pino as well who scored against Real Madrid Jan Stotte. It's picked up here by Hoot. Well, that was a late challenge there from Eva Pyer, and she knows it herself, and will get a yellow card for that. It just shows how it can affect a good team. Barcelona are playing and give the ball away easily. Hoot, who's an absolutely fantastic player, the pass up to Payo was poor, and then Payo's just come on and shows her frustration. The Payo was the youngest ever player to have played in the Polish Women's League, age 15. It just doesn't get any better than this, does it, Lucy, playing in front of a crowd that are just so up for it tonight. Absolutely, and no wonder these Barcelona players look like they're enjoying it. They're playing like they're enjoying the occasion, and why not? And they've taken this women's game to another level, this Barcelona team. Gets louder and louder. It's so brilliant. Here's Alpha. Puteas. Bonmati. This is Sunigorcevic back to the captain Puteas. Kiharo looking to play in Hermoso, but Hendrik got in the way. <laughs> Just 
Jill Hort. And the pass to Jan Stutte went behind it. Rasmus was in space on that right side. Couldn't pick up on it. Hendrik driving forward now. Just seems there's no way through for Wolfsburg at all. Yeah, but they're just allowing Barcelona as well with the passes that they're making to just win the ball back, regain possession, and then Wolfsburg don't see it for a few minutes. Hermoso. Puteas. Hermoso wasn't allowed to get a shot away. It was well closed down. Rod. Hans Dolce has a bit of space to run into. Rauch is. Running next to her, decides to go for Rort. Yeah, as good as the football that Barcelona play, Leon has to just get rid of the ball from the back line. She will do just that. Great decision making there. Barcelona are actually letting Wolfsburg have a bit of possession of their own, which is not what they usually let happen to other teams, is it? Certainly not, but dealing with everything that Wolfsburg have thrown at them so far. For Mati getting a round of applause, able to get away from Jill Hort. Ball into the feet of Sinagorcevic. Again, an important block from Hendrik. Now Wolfsburg will watch this game back as a group. And they'll be able to pinpoint everything that went wrong, but it's easy to do that when you watch, start watching a, a video of it. And actually, to do it in real life against this Barcelona team takes some doing. Well, the danger now for Wolfsburg is that Barcelona are ready to make a couple of changes of their own. Those two being Claudia Pina and Asazan Oshuala, two players who know just exactly how to score goals. And if there's something that Wolfsburg don't want to happen, is Barcelona to score more goals against them. coming from a little bit of a deeper position from behind the ball in the second half and in the first half she was pushing right on bon mati here's Vasmud who's got time to drive forward here for Wolfsburg Leaves it for Jill Lord. But the flag is up against her, so it won't count. Wolfsburg, who got themselves a glimmer of hope, have had it quickly taken away from them. Yeah, so Barcelona have got players, committed players up the pitch, and it's terrific play from Vasmud. I'm not sure whether it was, we'll soon see from VAR, but that, that sort of ball progression into the spaces takes out about four or five Barcelona players, making a good pass into road. Terrific finish. They've not done it enough, Wolfsburg. They've not recognised the times to run with the ball. They've not recognised where to put the ball, where it can hurt Barcelona, but they definitely did it then. Or will they get the rewards for it? Well, it's definitely tight, isn't it? assistant referee immediately had the flag up. Jill Rold wasn't even allowed to celebrate the goal. My 
initial thought that she she was level, but I mean, no, the minute differences in the lines. You saw that in Barcelona it didn't work in their favour, did it? Earlier on in the second half. Well, it's definitely a tight one because they're still checking it. We'll have to wait to see the replay again just to see how tight it really was. Jill Hoard, the player, with a nice finish to get it away from Sandra Panos, who doesn't let many goals past it. Yeah, they're building the part up here, VAR officials. <laughs> given it well the goal stands Wolfsburg do have their glimmer of hope that's terrific play from Faso she did look actually in the naked eye she looked like she was level or on side and it was a good finish but I have to say that it's the first time that Wolfsburg have connected good enough passes that have made the right decisions progressing the ball and got their goal Well, every goal counts, and Wolfsburg have just lessened that margin. Jill Hoard on her birthday. With Barcelona make a couple of changes. El Mosso is replaced by Hassan Oshwala. Shana Gorcevic. Is replaced by Claudia Pina, who is having the best scoring season of her career. Bomati. Iharo through to Puteas. Bomati. Here's Graham Hansen. She's allowed to keep going. Graham Hansen. Oshwala's there too. And Claudia Pina. Oh, off the crossbar. Immediately the two substitutes for Barcelona straight into the action. I think Schultz made the save onto the crossbar then. That's a problem. Wolfsburg have had a little bit of joy, but it's about preventing Barcelona having their period of time in front of goal. And, you know, you, they've had some good periods in the second half, Wolfsburg, but not quite enough. Rolfe. Schwaller will chase this ball down. Not quite cleared away. Also causing themselves problems. Bomati. Pina. Here's Puteas. Now, Giharo, it's opening up here for Oshwala. Really well closed down there by Dominique Janssen. You see, Oshwala is a different proposition now. A willing runner into the channels, just using her pace to get in behind. I think she's just got, she touched it with her right foot before she took it with her left foot there. Well, Jill Roth. Is replaced by Rebecca Blomqvist. Now you can see how tight it really was. Now 
goal from Jill Hortz, but an important goal for Wolfsburg to get. And just give them that glimmer of hope that they need. Of course, away goals not counting. But they still have that second leg to play in Germany. It shows it can be done. It shows where the, the weak points of Barcelona when they lose possession but it's how often a team can actually do that against Barcelona whilst stopping Barcelona from st scoring. And that's the big issue that all European teams have against this really strong Barcelona side. Gihara, here's Bomati. And again, just trying to weave a way through the Wolfsburg players. Well, both Barcelona and Wolfsburg don't have a game in between the second leg, which is next week. So full focus on the Champions League for these two teams. Wolfsburg do have more games coming up, though, than Barcelona left of the season Barcelona just with the three games left in the league of course that league already wrapped up for them and only three clubs have defended their Champions League title Wolfsburg being one of them Barcelona looking to do that for themselves this season Really, if you're looking at it in two halves, Wolfsburg have won the second half. Well, that, they had to do that. They had to do something different in the second half. They had to show some of the quality that they got and that they were able to deal with the movement from Barcelona. And of course, they've got the goal because Barcelona's best bit of defending, the best way of defending is by having the ball when they haven't got it. As in opposition, you have to choose the areas you attack. And I think that's what did that in terms of running with the ball into, into areas it just opened up for Wolfsburg. Barcelona will still feel they're in complete control of this game. There's a Mexican wave going around the stadium now. <laughs> ball in here for Vasmut. Jon Stotter is there to help, and so is Pio. She looked Tony offside. Tony who got the block in. Yeah, she looked offside then, that initial run. And Paredes had her hand up all the way through. She just made the run too early. That's a good line from Barcelona. There's only Rolfe nearest, but she was way offside. They couldn't finish it either, Wolfsburg. This is that opportunity that, as you mentioned, Schultz just up to the top of the crossbar. Well, Bomati, who opened the scoring within two minutes of this game, is to be replaced by Mariona Caldente. A huge round of applause ringing around the stadium for her. Mariana Caldente, who was injured in the international break, returns for Barcelona. It's great for these Barcelona girls to, to get all that adulation from the crowd. They've played so well in this game. And Caldente is probably one of their better forwards as well. Ball through here to Hoshuala. Can't finish it, though. And again, Schultz brought in to save. Schultz has kept this score down for Wolfsburg, one-on-one. -on -one. Schwala should really have done better. She stayed on side, it was a good run. In behind, stretch out there. Good goalkeeping. Should be disappointed with that. 
Corner comes in. Here's Graham Hansen to take. Not sure if that one was off the training ground. Barcelona still the only team in the Champions League with a 100% winning record. And even as we get to the latter stages, chance from Oshuala. It was a good save, wasn't it, from Schultz? Yeah, she could have done better. Oshuala, she sort of gave the goalkeeper a chance to save it, but she's done well. Schultz. Puteas through again for Oshwala and still can't finish it. Helmut Schult really has been the saviour for Wolfsburg in this game. What about that bit of play from Puteas? Knocks it over. The incoming player. And that deserved to finish, didn't it? That piece of play by Puteas. Knocks it over Latvain and played a perfect pass in. Puteas! Wolfsburg looking to come forward in numbers. Pyle couldn't hold on to it. A little back flick there from Claudia Pina, who will chase this ball down. She's got to go up against Wiedemeyer. Pina, ball in here for Puteas, who goes to ground. Penalty. Well, the referee didn't take long to make a decision. Yeah, Janssen decided to make the challenge, but Poteas' feet were far too quick. He anticipated the challenge, I think, and just moved the ball sideways. It's a terrific play. And Wolfsburg had the ball up the pitch, and they had the players up the pitch. They just couldn't keep it up there. And then Barcelona counter very, very quickly. Poteas comes in, takes that first touch, and takes a second touch so quickly. And Janssen just bamboozled by her feet. So Alexia Puteas to take this penalty for Barcelona up against the very experienced Almut Schultz who has had plenty to do in this game. She's made some fantastic saves. Puteas looking to extend Barcelona's lead even more. Potato steps up. It was a knee penalty. Barcelona have five. And the crowd inside this stadium have gone wild for this group of players. And they've definitely put on a show, and that's why they've come back. Coolest player in the stadium and taking a penalty to make it five for her team. Look at this feet, and just drew Janssen into the challenge. The ball had already gone. And just absolutely chilled under pressure. Completely enjoying and reveling in this atmosphere, these Barcelona players, they just love it. And best player in the world. All the tables have turned. Alexi Puteas with her 10th Champions League goal this season, which makes her now the top scorer in the competition. What a feeling it must be for every single Barcelona player who's been able to get themselves a goal in this game. Absolutely unbelievable. And I've been playing football since I was five or seven, five or six years old. And to think that 
you could I could in my lifetime watch a group of players play at this sort of level in front of this many people is absolutely incredible. And credit to them all. And they deserve it so much. This amount of people, this crowd. That doesn't get much better, does it? It is party time in Barcelona. They still have the second leg to play. But these fans inside this stadium have absolutely enjoyed every single minute of this evening. And it just doesn't stop. Jons Dotter with a really big throw, punched away by Panos. Riedemeyer with the ball back in, still not cleared away. Vasman got a little flick onto it, and Panos comfortably holds on to that. Oh, what a throw that was as well, because how have they not used that before, Wolfsburg? It's a real weapon when you can throw the ball like that, and an opportunity for Wolfsburg then. Well, Wahabi has come on for Graham Hansen. Here's Oshwala. He's looking to kill one. Look at that attendance. Over 91,000 fans inside this stadium. An incredible attendance. And rightly so. Here's Puteas. Rolfe looking to weave away and get another opportunity in for Barcelona. It's flicked away by Hendrik. Rolfe is not done yet. It's so important that Wolfsburg just keep going and keep trying to defend and try not to concede again. This game is probably beyond them and the tie is probably beyond them, but trying to reduce any more goals that they concede. Well, here come a couple of the changes then for Barcelona. Alexia Puteas, two tonight. And of course, every single fan inside this stadium up on their feet for the best player in the world. Yeah, she had a terrific game as well, as she normally does. Really high standards. The player at the top of a game just reveling in an atmosphere like this. It's Ingrid Engen, who's come on. And Barcelona have a corner. Stotte will chase this down, but Engen was there first. They've got it back, Wolfsburg. Svenja Hoot looking to flick it, and there's Vasmut with a header. And that was a really big opportunity for Wolfsburg. Yeah, she's done it a few times in the second half now. She'll, as soon as she's got it, she's just hit it long. Barcelona are out of shape. They're overloaded by Wolfsburg players, but they just haven't made the most of it. Well, it's another record-breaking crowd inside this stadium. 91,648 tonight. They've beaten 
the record that they set against Real Madrid, which was 91,553. And Wolfsburg making their changes. Jon Stotzit makes way for Tulid Knag. These Wolfsburg players at times have looked absolutely stunned by what they're experiencing. Wahabi, Hendrik in the way. Two minutes of the five played. Barcelona want more, they want six, and the fans certainly do. Caldente, Engen. Claudia Pina. Well, it's been a vintage Barcelona performance tonight, hasn't it, Lucy? Yeah, right from minute one, Wolfsburg absolutely struggled to cope with the opposite movements of these forward players and midfield players of, of Barcelona, who were military style in that sort of formation, the movement is what they used to. Wolfsburg just could not cope with it. Well, Barcelona comfortably in the lead with that 5-1 scoreline. They still have the second leg to play next week over in Germany. But this Tonight will be a moment they'll never forget. Rolfa keeps it alive. This time for one more chance from Barcelona. Hanging back to Rolfa. Paredes, Caldente, I don't think the crowd in attendance here will want to go home. Caldente. Rolfe leaves it for Calante, who's trying to get that shot away. Svenja Hoot was the player who stopped it. There goes the full-time whistle. A huge victory for Barcelona. Not only 5-1 winners in the first leg of the Women's Champions League semi-finals, but again, they have smashed Another world record, 91,648 inside this stadium. A record attendance for a women's football game. It had stood at 91,553 only a couple of weeks ago when this team played here against Real Madrid. They've bettered that. A fantastic performance from Barcelona. They got four in the first half. 
Alexia Puteas got the fifth goal for Barcelona from the penalty spot. Wolfsburg did have a glimmer of hope thanks to Jill Rod, who scores on her birthday. There was a long VAR check for that goal, though. And Lucy Ward, what an incredible night and moment for Barcelona, who again have made themselves the front runners in this competition. Yeah, an incredible performance from an incredible team. And these people come and watch because this team is absolutely superb. A superb team full of excellent players who like to play on this stage, who revel on this stage, who started off this game at high level, high intensity. They played the game their way. They scored the goals, all of them eight or nine out of ten and this crowd just love it and that's the reason they're here because the show that was being put on in front of them well the goals that were scored were brilliant from barcelona they opened the scoring within two minutes thanks to aitana bonmati it was a fantastic finish caroline graham hansen as well with Silky smooth skills to make it 2-0. Jenny Amoso also in on the action. Alexia Puteas got two herself. One from the penalty spot. Jill Ward with the only goal for Wolfsburg. And there you can see 34 attempts for Barcelona, 20 on target. It is just classic Barcelona style. Absolutely incredible. I mean, we could talk about Wolfsburg and defensively how poor they were in the first half, but take nothing away from this Barcelona team. The way that they play, they at all of them, it's just perfection. Their movement, the fluidity, just the way that they're structured and the fact that these, these players can finish and they completely control this game from start to finish. Well, it's a massive boost for Barcelona, who will go into the second leg with a massive, massive advantage. Full-time, Barcelona 5, Wolfsburg 1. 